Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Introduction to Mathematical Statistics. And we're in Chapter 1, part of this playlist, which I'm calling Probability. So let's jump to today's topic, which is Conditional Probability. So assume that an experiment is to be performed for which the sample space of all possible outcomes is S, and also the probabilities have been specified for all the events in S. How does the probability of event A change after it has been learned that event B has occurred? This new probability of A is called the conditional probability of event A given that event B has occurred. Now the notation that we'll use is this. Now we have to assume that the probability of B is greater than zero because we're dividing by it. But it's the probability of A given B. This vertical sign means given what, what's after that. So we're given that event B occurred, what's the probability of A? And it's equal to the probability of, the, of A intersect B divided by the probability of B. And that's it. And we'll go through several examples. Now, one big note that the event B, and this is so important for, the, for conceptually, the event B becomes the new sample space, which is why we divide by the probability of B. And so I want to go over that just a little bit with the Venn diagram. So S, our whole sample space, is this box. But once we say event B has occurred, we know that it has to be in here. We're somewhere in here. And so if we look at any subset of B, so if we look at the probability of A, that subset of B is smaller than B, right? So that means we're that, that the numerator is smaller than the denominator, always. So the probability is less than one. So that meets one of those axioms of probability. But it works for any subset. So if we look at the probability of C given B, this set is less than B. So it's going to be less than one probability of a intersect c given that b has occurred is this little set but we could also do what's the probability of b given that b has occurred so we put the probability of b in the numerator divide by it and we get one so it does act as a new sample space and that's what conditional probability is all about so an example, two die are rolled and the sum t is observed. What's the probability that t is less than 8? Well, the prob and that's this. So there's one way to observe a 2, two ways to observe a 3, three ways to observe a 4, etc. Six ways to observe a 7. So you add them up, divide by 36, and you get uh, 21 over 36, which is 0.58333333. Find the probability that t is odd. Is this how many ways can we roll an odd? So there's two ways to roll a three, four ways to roll a five, six ways to roll a seven, four ways to roll a nine, two ways to roll an eleven. So that's one half, and that's you know that's what you think it should be. Now to find the probability that t is less than eight, given that t is odd. So the probability that t is less than 8, given that t is odd. So we the numerator is the, the t less than 8 and, or intersect, t is odd. So that means we've that this probability, oh, and that should be a probability around that. I missed that, capital P, probability. So there's two ways to roll a 3 four rolls to roll a five, six ways to roll a seven. And, and those are less than eight and odd over the 36 total. And of course, the probability that T is odd is one half. So this probability is 0.666 forever. Now we could just say 0.6 with a bar above the six. And that bar is called a vinculum. Anyway, for anyone interested. So now let's do an R illustration of conditional probability. And I'd like to point out that this is a calculation, not a simulation. So 
if we use the expand grid function to look at all possible outcomes of die one and die two, it creates a matrix that is 36 rows by two columns and it goes through every possible combination. But we're really interested in the row sum. So we take the row sums of the two rows and put it and I store that in variable dice sum. Now we just start doing calculations. So we count up how many dice sums are less than eight divided by the length of dice sum. Of course, we could just put 36 there, but this is just to illustrate to do it generically. We get 0.5833, which is what we got in the example above. Here, um, we want to find how the probability of the sum is odd. So we use what's called the modulo function. And in R, that's the, the percent, percent, you know, back to back. So we want the dice sum modulo two. So if this is zero, that means it's even. If it's one, it's odd. So we count how many times the modulo two, you know, dice sum modulo two is equal to one. The divide by the length, and that's a half. So now the probability that the sum is less than eight, given that the sum is odd. So remember, now I want to take the sample space and reduce it down. So we take dice sum, which is our original sample space, and we're only going to grab the ones that are odd and put those in odd rolls. So now this becomes our new sample space. So we count on it. So we count how many are less than eight and then divide by the length of the odd rolls. And that produces 0.666 forever or 0.6 with a vinculum above it. Now, the multiplication rule for conditional probability is this. So we have two events that are not independent and it's convenient sometimes to find the probability of A intersect B using one of these formulas. And these are two formulas and they're both the same. And, but I wanna point out in the formula above, if we looked at the probability of A given B, that was the probability A intersect B divided by the probability B. So what we've done is just multiplied that up. And the same way here, the probability of B given A was the probability of A intersect B divided by the probability A. So we just multiply that up. And so these two formulas are uh, whole. And actually, so we can set these two second uh, probabilities equal to each other. So an example of selecting two balls. So assume we have a box with R red balls and B blue balls. Randomly select two balls without replacement. What's the probability that the first ball is red and the second ball is blue? So let's let A be the, the event first ball drawn is red. B is the event second ball drawn is blue. We want to find the probability that A intersect B. And intersect means and. So we want the event A occurred and event B occurred, and that's what we want. So the probability of A is there's R red balls in the box divided by the total number of balls, R plus B. The probability of B, given that A has occurred, well, there's still B blue balls in the box, but there's one less total. So this is the probability of, 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 of observing a blue ball given that A has occurred. So then this intersects, probably A intersect B is the product of those two. And if we just stick in numbers 22 and 33, then this probability is 0.244. Now, let's do a simulation of this. <clears throat> so first, I just want to illustrate what we're printing out. So let's let R equal 22, B equal 33. We're going to do it for 10. So S apply applies a function so many times. And our function is we're sampling balls from this box, size two, we're doing it, we're drawing twice without replacement. And then this is the output. So every column is a simulation of, of you know, that we've grabbed two balls. So then a red, then a blue, a red, then a blue, a blue and a blue, blue and a blue, and et cetera. And so we're looking for how many times that we grabbed a red one first, then a blue one. We're going to count those up, divide by how many that, you know, replications we had. So let's do it 222 times. And we're going to store the results in variable two draws. And now we're going to count how many times the, so row one, 
is an R and row two is a B. Divide by how many we draw, you know, how many columns we have. And it's 0.23. So it's in the ballpark of the theoretical, but it's not quite it. But the nice thing about frequency estimation, the larger the sample, it can be shown that it goes to the exact probability. So let's do it for 1 million draws. So the, it's actually the same code I just changed in. And then we estimate the probability to be 0.2446. So it's actually much closer. And the larger the n we go, the closer this actually gets. So now a general rule for conditional probability is if we let the events A1, A2 to AN such that their intersection is, is not, you know, not missing or not the empty set, then the following holds, the probability of this intersection. Oh, and, and actually look at this notation change. I actually just noticed it. I put commas there. So probably A comma, probably, you know, A1 comma, probably A2 comma, A, you know, all the way to AN. That actually means and, and it means intersection, which when we get to joint distributions later in the playlist, you'll see that. And so actually I didn't mean to put commas, but it means the same thing. So in the, in the, it's this, the probability of A times the probability A2 given A1 has happened, probably A3 given that A1 and A2 has happened, da -da 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 -da, times the probability of AN given that A1, A2 all the way up to AN has happened. So let's look at this last example. So assume a box contains R red balls, B blue balls, and they have to be greater than two because that intersection has to be uh not the empty set. Randomly select four balls without replacement, which probably the sequence is red, blue, red, blue. So we're going to define these events. A1 be the first ball drawn as red. A2 is the second ball drawn as blue. A3 is the third ball's red. A4 is the fourth ball's blue. Find this probability. So we use the multiplication rule. The probability that we uh, A1 is R over R plus B, the probability A2, given that A1's happened, there's still B blue balls in the box, but there's one less total. Probably A3, given that A1 and A2's happened, and now there's one less red ball, so it's R minus one, but there's two less total. Probably A4 is B1 over R plus B minus three. And if we let R equal 22 and B equal three, then this probability is 0.0596. Now, one last simulation, and, and we're actually finished with this uh, video. We're going to simulate this. We're going to let R equal 22, B equal 33. We're going to draw 100,000 times. And we're going to use the same code as before, except I'm going to put uh, size equal 4, because we're going to grab 4 without replacement. Same box. R red balls, B blue balls. We're going to store it into a variable called four draws this time. Previous I said two draws, but it's the same. We want that first row. We want to count. The first row was an R and the second row was a B and the third row was an R and the fourth row was a B. Divide by how many we did. And we got 0 0.05883, which is actually very close to the theoretical calculation, as it should be. Okay, we're at 13 minutes. I need to stop the video. I hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.